welcome. I'm Ijoma Onyato tonight. Four companies pleaded guilty to laundering $15.6 million, allegedly belonging to the former first lady, Mrs. Patience Jonathan. British prosecutors uphold conviction of former Delta State Governor James Ibori despite evidence of bribery against a British police officer investigating his case. President Mohamed Buhari prescribes out-of-the-box thinking and engaging the private sector in reviving the economy. And Australian investigators confirm large item of debris discovered off Tanzania's coast belongs to missing Malaysia Airlines flight MH370. News tonight, global oil prices rise above 2% amid concerns of more crude supply from Nigeria and Libya. On Sports News tonight, new UEFA President Alexander Chaferin resumes, confirms Ukrainian city of Kiev as host for 2017-2018 Champions League final. And from Abuja, I am Ibrahim Adra. President Buhari pledges to support constitutional amendment towards ensuring autonomy of local governments from states. We begin tonight from the Federal High Court in Lagos, where four companies allegedly used to launder about $15.6 million by an aide to former President Goodluck Jonathan have pleaded guilty. The former First Lady, Patience Jonathan, had last week filed a fundamental human rights enforcement suit where she admitted ownership of the monies. Our judiciary correspondent Shola Shoyeli reports. The courts across the country are just resuming from their annual vacation, and this case may just be an indication of the very busy schedule ahead of them. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission arraigned seven defendants before Justice Babs Keumi of the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos. A former special advisor on domestic affairs to former President Goodluck Jonathan, Warwick Pamor Owe Dudafa, is the first defendant in the charge. He was charged alongside a lawyer, Amadri Briggs, a banker, Demola Bolodeku, and four companies on an amended 15 count charge. In the first count, the seven defendants were said to have conspired to conceal $15,591,700, a sum which they reasonably ought to have known formed part of the proceeds of an unlawful act of stealing, an offense contrary to Section 18A of the Money Laundering Prohibition Amendment Act 2012 and punishable under Section 15.3 of the same act. If convicted, the offence carries a jail term of not less than seven, but not more than 14 years. It was a lengthy legal battle to get the defendants to take their plea, especially as the four companies did not have legal representation. The other defence lawyers strenuously argued that the EFCC could have picked anyone from the streets and passed them off as representatives of the company. They insisted that the representatives ought to provide a letter from their companies authorising them to appear before the judge. But counsel to the EFCC, Rotimio Yedepo, countered by saying that the men were listed as directors in the company's registration records. He insisted that the anti-graft agency had proof. The charges were eventually read to the defendants, and interestingly, the former presidential aide, the lawyer and the banker pleaded not guilty. But the representatives of the four defendant companies entered a guilty plea. The implication of this under the Money Laundering Prohibition Amendment Act is that the companies would be wound up with its assets forfeited to the federal government. The twist to this case is that the monies in these companies have been claimed by Mrs. Patience Jonathan, the wife of former President Goodluck Jonathan. While conducting its investigation, the EFCC had frozen the company's accounts lodged with SkyBank PLC by placing a no-debit order on them. But the former First Lady last week filed a fundamental rights enforcement suit against the EFCC and SkyBank, claiming that the money, which the EFCC said were proceeds of theft, belongs to her. In the suit, which is yet to be argued in court, Mrs. Jonathan is seeking a court order to compel the EFCC to lift the no-debit order. She is also seeking damages against SkyBank in the sum of 200 million naira for what she termed a violation of her right to own personal property under Section 44 of the Constitution. With the guilty plea of the companies and the likely forfeiture of the monies, it will be interesting to see the next moves of the former First Lady. 
In the meantime, the lawyer and the banker have been granted bail in the sum of 250 million naira each. The former presidential aide has been directed to formally file his bail application. The defendants will all remain in prison custody till they perfect their bail. Trial is expected to commence on the 27th of September. Shola Shoyeli, Channel Television News. And staying with legal matters, British prosecutors say James Zibori's conviction remains valid despite evidence that a British police officer took bribes during the investigation into his case. Lawyers representing the former governor of Delta State had alleged serious misconduct by British prosecuting authorities. The allegations include that the prosecution failed to properly disclose information to the defense and that it made misleading statements in court. Ibori is serving a 13-year sentence in a British prison after pleading guilty in 2012 to 10 counts of fraud and money laundering. But the case appears to have become an embarrassment for Britain since one of Ibori's associates alleged that the judicial process was tainted because prosecutors had covered up evidence of police corruption. Away from legal matters, the president has called on local and foreign investors to support the government's efforts to get Nigeria out of a recession. Addressing cabinet ministers and economists during a one-day retreat at the presidential villa in Abuja, President Mohamed Buhari said the situation requires government officials to think out of the box to find sustainable solutions. Our correspondent Omalogo Nadi reports. The entire cabinet of President Muhammadu Buhari are at this ministerial retreat alongside economic experts and heads of key government agencies and departments. The main agenda of the retreat is economic recession and ways out of it, with key focus on priority areas that will form the framework for the 2017 budget. President Muhammadu Buhari, who says there will be a review of budget of some ministries in the face of the recession, says private sector support is important now than ever before. Indeed, the challenges we face in the current recession require out-of-the-box thinking to deploy strategies that involve engaging meaningfully with the private sector to raise the level of private sector investment in the economy as a whole. We are confident that the level of private investment will grow as we are determined to make it easier to do business in Nigeria by the reforms we are introducing under auspices of the Presidential Committee on Ease of Doing Business. One of the speakers at the retreat, Mr. Bismarck Rolwani, says the economic recession started in 2012 and has no quick fix. Even as the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, says policies and careful planning are key now. There's only one solution in recession, that is you must spend out of the recession. You revive the economy and you put um, uh, money uh, in the hands of the households. The Nigerian public is tired of what cost it. The Nigerian public is tired of the fact that it didn't start today. The Nigerian public wants to know what next and how soon are we going to see light at the end of the tunnel. It's going to take us about 18 months, 12 to 18 months to get out of it before we begin to see the signs of it. With some luck, we'll probably start earlier. The entire cabinet, as well as economists and developmental experts led by the vice president, are currently brainstorming for policy solutions to the economic recession. But if a 12 to 18 months rebound projection made by the economic analysts is anything to go by, then more serious austerity measures are needed yet at all quarters until Nigeria can come out safely at the other side. From the presidential villa in Abuja, I am Omelogo Nadi, reporting for Channels Television. We'll have more on the economy and the federal government's efforts to get Nigeria out of recession later on in the bulletin. We move on and a former Chief of Defence Staff, General Martin Luther Aguay, is concerned about the process of recruitment and promotions in the Nigerian military. 
General Aguay, who was speaking in Abuja, said intelligence gathering and management must be implemented to avoid recruiting the nation's enemies into the armed forces. Our correspondent Gloria Umezoke reports. The Nigerian military have touted their success in the fight against insurgency and whether or not the nation's insecurity challenge is dwindling, there are still questions about the military style of operation and areas that needs urgent adjustment. Recruitment, pressure will come. The question, as somebody has said here, the person you are recruiting, can he defend you? Or you are recruiting because you want to please somebody so that he will call you a good boy? Are you promoting somebody because you think he has the potential to go forward? Or you are promoting him because 10 years ago he did something good? Doing something good 10 years ago doesn't mean that in the next two years he will be able to do the same thing. The challenges as you higher you go, the challenges become bigger. And not everybody that has the capacity to run those challenges. The former military chief was addressing participants at the Institute for Security Studies. In the same vein, other guest speakers expressed their concerns over Nigeria's seriousness to combat terrorism. Whether it is in the police, in the army or wherever, go and check. The least developed unit or department is the counterterrorism department or unit. I did the research on that. You have all kinds of joint forces and all that. And all that, doing border patrol, whatever, in the northeast, book around this, in the creeks, and so forth and so on. When, indeed, your trainings are not harmonized, you don't have a template to even harmonize that. How can it work? Against the backdrop of recent threats by the Boko Haram sect, how much experience and information the nation has gathered came under scrutiny. We don't have background checks. The son of so-and-so, influential, you give him job and is accepted on the strength of someone else's name. So he comes into the system. He stays with the rank. He participates in the meeting. He's taken to the training. He sees the different types of training. He identifies the training you don't have. And by the time events start occurring, you discover that you have a secret plan for an undercover work. And then before you say Jack Robinson, it has been exposed. It has been agreed that there must be a paradigm shift in the nation's intelligence process because if not properly managed, can mislead those in a position to take actionable decisions for the country. Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. The chairman of the People's Democratic Party in Edo State, Dan Obe, has denied claims by the APC that the party hired militants ahead of the proposed governorship election. Mr. Obi, who held a press briefing at the party secretariat in Bini City, the state capital, said it's untrue that the so-called militants were arrested by men of the police command. Okay, campaign after campaign, the ruling of Progressive Congress, APC, and the main opposition, People's Democratic Party, PDP, contained fiercely for the votes of their due electorate. The PDP accuses the APC of masterminding the shift of the date of the Ado governorship election from 10th of September to 28th of September 2016. The Ado State Chairman of PDP, Dan Orbe, further claims that the ruling party also orchestrated the arrests of suspected militants by the Ado State Police Command, allegedly hired by the PDP. They've, they've perfected ways and plans to inform the Nigeria police and the various security agencies to swap on them with uh, the perfect arrangement that when arrested, those people should confess that they were invited to come to the state by the PDP to assist them at the election. Reacting to the allegations, APC chairman Anselm Ojezwa insists that the arrest is a confirmation of their earlier worries about the PDP's plan to use non-residents of a due state to subvert the electoral process. All the hotels in the areas where they wanted to cause mayhem were fully, fully booked. This is evidence. What is even more, after my statement, recently, just as uh, you have heard, people were arrested with arms. And... In part two, after the break, more on efforts to get the economy out of recession. I'll be joined on the News at 10 by an economist and CEO of Quest Advisory Services, Mr. Bayo Rotimi. That's in a moment. To join us again.